So really quickly, what I want to cover with you is this idea of stress. Because most people, when they think of stress, they think, oh, I'm not stressed because they don't feel emotionally stressed. That's really not the way to think about stress. You can have metabolic stress without feeling emotional. An example of this is newborn mother or newborn babies and their mothers. The mothers are in a very happy state, but their body is stressed out because of this new life and taking care of this baby. That's called metabolic stress. So you don't have to be sad and anxious to feel stress. We call this metabolic tension. Acute stress, our bodies are designed for that. If a lion jumps out from behind a tree and you run away or fight that lion, that's an acute stress. The stress goes away and you will adapt. Not only will you adapt, but you will get stronger. And exercise, when it is done the right way, causes adaptation. You should feel better, more alert, more functional, better immune response. Everyone knows all these hugely beneficial responses that all kinds of exercise give us. But when exercise is taken to the extreme, this whole idea of more is better in our culture, chronic, persistent, extreme stress, leads to maladaptation. In other words, the body can no longer adapt. You get into this sympathetic nervous system overdrive, and now the metabolism does not adapt and becomes dysfunctional. The other thing is, is that you need to think about this, because when we exercise more, right, and then we eat less. And I just showed you how this can use up resources. And actually, when it gets very chronic and extreme, then you cannot digest appropriately. What is happening to your resources? Calories that you need for energy, macronutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and micronutrients like zinc, magnesium, vitamin B6. When you do not have the resources and you continue to be under chronic persistent and extreme stress, things get even worse. So usually your resources after you exercise will help you recover, which will then also help you repair and then you adapt. But because you are not giving your body the resources it needs, because not only are you pushing it to the extreme with extreme exercise, but you're also not feeding it you're actually pushing yourself and making it more likely that you will get into this maladaptation response. This is what we mean by the metabolism being broken. What happens if you can't get back to adaptation? That's what we're talking about. So here's a review for you a little bit. Prolonged sympathetic overdrive. What is it actually doing in the brain? Well, the hypothalamus is a part of the brain right here above the brain stem actually and what happens under chronic and severe stress is this area becomes for lack of a better word irritating and that's important because this area of the brain is responsible for also regulating all your metabolic hormones hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline and cortisol and growth hormone and progesterone and testosterone and thyroid hormone. So what ends up happening is this irritation to the hypothalamus, the first domino that falls is this hormonal disruption. The hypothalamus communicates with the pituitary gland, which communicates to the adrenal gland, the thyroid gland, and the gonads. In women, the ovaries, and in men, the testicles. So you might say, let's stop here for a minute and say, well, Jade, what exactly does this mean? What I am showing you here is the first key disorder that happens in metabolic dysfunction. This is why some of you are saying, God, my adrenals don't feel right. Or you heard this term adrenal fatigue, or, you know, my doctor found that I have abnormal thyroid on my glands, or, you know, I've noticed that my menses is no longer regular or men, their libido goes away. This is the first step. Does it have to come from chronic exercise? It doesn't have to. It can come from chronic sleep deprivation. It can come from chronic stress and emotional disturbances. But this is what's happening. And the primary places that are impacted are the adrenal glands, the thyroid, and the ovaries or testicles. And it usually goes in that order. So before, long before your thyroid takes a hit, normally your adrenal glands are being impacted. Long before your menses 
and your cycle starts becoming disrupted, your adrenal glands and thyroid may be impacted. This is hugely important stuff, and this is the beginning of this dysfunction. So what causes it? Eat less and exercise more. Does it always cause it? Absolutely not. There are people who can eat less and go on 500 calorie a day diets and exercise like crazy and never get into any issues. And that is what is confusing for people because this stuff doesn't show up on the research because so many people do just fine. And guess what? So many people don't do just fine. And so if you're listening to this lecture, you probably fall into that clinical population that does not do just fine. That eating less and exercising more for long periods of time has consequences for you. The sympathetic overdrive leads to this domino effect that leads to nutrient depletion. You get the adrenal and thyroid issues popping up. You get continual stress and irritation of the hypothalamus if you continue extreme dieting and exercising. And then you get further depletion of your resources. Then you get hormone and organ dysfunction and hormone resistance and metabolic inflexibility. You might say, Jake, what's this slide all about? What I'm telling you here is that this turns into a vicious, vicious cycle. You eat less, exercise more, you get this domino effect that occurs, and then you get a vicious cycle that feed forwards on itself and you feel awful along the way. Notice at the bottom here, hormone resistance and metabolic inflexibility. One of the key things I want to talk to you about is this idea of insulin and cortisol. You see that seesaw again. So here we are at this seesaw. Well, insulin and cortisol have an interesting relationship. We've all heard of the detrimental impact of insulin resistance. Most people think insulin resistance only comes from eating too much. But insulin resistance also comes from stressing too much. And it certainly can happen to people who are eating less and exercising more. You probably know if you have this situation and you probably know that this happens because guess what happens? First thing that happens is less fat is lost in a caloric deficit. So you have a caloric deficit. Some people I've seen in my clinical practice are in thousands of calorie deficits and still their body will not release any fat. I'm gonna say that again because there's people in the health and fitness world who act as if this cannot happen and they wouldn't know it happens unless they saw it clinically. You can be in thousands of calorie deficits and still not be seeing fat loss. You might see bone loss, you might see muscle loss, you might see water loss, but you're not seeing fat loss or you're seeing it happen very, very slowly. And then here's the other thing. Once you get frustrated and start to raise your calories, guess what happens? More fat is gained in caloric excess. So as soon as you go back to normal eating, now your body is gonna store fat like crazy. It's not just about too much food, it's about too much stress. So you need to ask yourself, how did you get here? Was it because you were on the too much stress side of the seesaw? or when you were on the too much food side of the seesaw. Both are just as detrimental. That is what you need to understand about metabolic rehabilitation and metabolic damage. And guess what? We know it's controversial. You're gonna go out there in the world and you're gonna to read today on the internet, tomorrow on the internet, and get all kinds of information that says this can't happen. Well, if you're listening to this, you know it can. And this is what's frustrating. People in our clinic who are in tears because everyone tells them this can't happen. 